How to spot a victim of human trafficking. A trafficker can be male or female. Recruiters working for the trafficker are often victims too. They can present as family, employers, neighbors, or companions. They should never serve as language translators. A controlling partner may indicate human trafficking. Proceed with care in the safest way possible for both patient and staff. Diana? Have a protocol that ensures these situations are handled in a consistent and direct manner. I'm sorry, it's our policy to initially evaluate patients individually. I can call you back in a few minutes. Billy? Recent studies have shown that over 80% of survivors sought medical care while being trafficked, but they were not identified. Physicians, nurses, EMTs, social workers, dentists, all healthcare professionals are in a key position to identify victims of violence if they have the proper training and resources. Oh, I fell. I can be clumsy. Go get the doctor. Are you okay with that? As I mentioned before, it's our policy to examine the patients first. We let visitors back in when it's in the best interest of the patient. Your friend Angel is asking to join us back here. Is that what you want? Red flags of human trafficking can include signs of physical violence, no ID, fear of a controlling companion, hesitancy to speak, poor eye contact, or a complaint not matching presentation. Whenever possible, provide suspected victims a safe and private space so that sensitive conversations can take place. Hi, Lily. I'm Dr. Verghese. Is it okay if I uh, take a closer look at your belly? So notice significant bruising on your face. How did that happen? Oh, these are my fault. I didn't follow the rules. We encourage you to familiarize yourself with the PAIR tool, a guide for healthcare professionals on how to provide trauma-informed assistance for patients who are at high risk of abuse neglect, or violence. The PAIR tool ensures that the patient's wishes, safety, and well-being are prioritized. The stomach should be feeling better soon. Just a superficial bruise, no internal injury. Lily, this is Nicole. She works as an advocate. She'd like to talk to you just to make sure you're safe. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I guess so. Hi, Lily. I know you're here for an injury, but I like to talk to every patient just to make sure that they're safe at home. We want to make sure that we can help you. Is that all right? The advocate has lived experience and is trained in a trauma-informed approach and process. After reviewing information about abuse, neglect, or violence, time is allowed for open discussion, especially if the patient is exhibiting risk factors of victimization. If assistance is declined, the patient's wishes are always respected. I'm safe. I'm a model and my boyfriend is my manager. Does your boyfriend keep your ID safe? Yes, and he keeps most of my money too, so I don't waste it. Do you know what's wrong with me? If the victim agrees, the advocate will make connections with resources such as temporary housing, mental health services, or health insurance applications. Remember, as healthcare providers, we are not here to rescue patients. Even if they decline help at first contact, let the victim know that your facility is a safe place to come back to. Lily, I can help you get connected to a safe house program if you want to get out of the situation that you're in. Are you interested in calling there? How is that safe? 
It's totally up to you, but you deserve a life that's safe from violence. I can help you with that if you want. I would like that. Here's a dignity backpack. It has toiletries, clothing, anything that you need. Empowerment, voice, and choice. Gaining the patient's permission empowers them and follows HIPAA regulations. The relevant paperwork can be completed now that the patient has consented. Here's your ride. If you ever need to, you can always check out our Safe Haven Clinic. The staff is specifically trained to treat patients who have experienced trauma similar to yours. But don't worry, it's free and confidential. 